Blacking China, Season 2, sponsored by Hayden T. Joseph, Certified Public Accountant. Visit us at advancedamericantax.com. There's a China Study Abroad Scholarship to the HBCU China Network. The Chinese Ministry of Education awarded scholarships, including the cost of tuition, room, and board for students from historically black universities who want to study in China. The details of the program are as follows. You take classes offered by Chinese faculty members as well as international faculty members at your Chinese university for residential credit, meaning your grades count. Students that you are about to hear their stories from participated and earned the China Scholarship, Study Abroad Scholarship, and studied in China for either a period of an entire semester or six weeks. However, none of these scholarships include your airfare to and from China. If you receive financial aid, and depending on which university you go to, you can use your financial aid to cover the cost of your airfare. And that's what these students have done. The last scholarships that will be offered are for the fall semester of 2017. So get on it now. Hey guys, watching out Shangshan Gangju. My name is Chanel Slaughter, and I am a <laughs> sophomore nursing major from Bowie State University. Ni hao, my name is Asia, also known as Wojao Achia, or other things. I go to Bowie State University. I'm a senior communications major with a concentration in broadcast journalism. And we are currently at Jinan University, which yeah. is located in, the Guang in Guangzhou of the Guangdong province in Ooh. China. Yeah. Hi, my name is Scott. I go to Bowie State University. My name is Lamar Baker. I'm at Bowie State University. <laughs> I'm Isaac Dees. I go to Morehouse College. Now, uh, my name is Joy Wilson. I'm uh, also go to Bowie State. China is different. Um, I went to a, a cookout, a Caribbean cookout, and my guy here, Kyle, was there, and he started passing out these uh, Chinese pendants, little pins, uh, and they said, you know, black in China, you know, black in China. And he's like, are you interested? Of course. Yeah, like, I want to go to China, but it depends on the money. Um, so it's like, yeah, you want to go, you can go. And at that point, I understood, but I didn't understand because I'm like, this is China he's talking about. Ain't nobody going to give me no free ride to China. In this case, it was an opportunity that he gave me, and I took advantage of it. And I'm here. Uh, so, yeah, I feel like a, a pot of gold. Ain't too, ain't too many people who got this opportunity. Mm. Yeah, Lars, China like, is located in Guangzhou, which is yeah. one of the biggest cities. And there's always something to do here. Mm -hmm. Great nightlife. Yeah. <laughs> so we're here for the experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was nice. And I like how it's like south. And it wasn't the typical like Beijing, Shanghai, Hong Kong. It you get was to like see the real China, yeah, like, like not just the tourist area in Beijing or Shanghai where everybody speaks English. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of people speak English. That's they why. speak English, but they don't speak it to us unless we ask. Yeah, they'll sit there, they'll stand behind us like when we're arguing with somebody, and they'll just they'll observe, analyze and it will be they like help, yeah. they observe the situation mm -hmm. to see and if they'll decide really. if they want to help. I mean, my school at Morehouse has a relationship. Hey, out here, so it's kind of just like an exchange program, I guess, similar to what Bowie has. And so I got the opportunity to come out here, and I took, it, took advantage of the opportunity. Oh, okay, cool. Our university has a partnership with Hey, Da, and you know, photos. I got my hands on. I mean, I, I always wanted to go to China and Japan, so like, for me to like be involved with like a program where I can't come to China. I was like, oh yeah, I'll do it. The classes we're taking is something that I probably would never, like Chinese economic and development is probably not something I would take ever, but I've been enjoying it. And I like the teachers, they kind of, they explain in a way where I actually understand instead of just straight numbers, like they'll use 
real world situations and like compare it to the U.S. So I like yeah, it. Yeah, but I noticed our professor from Pakistan. He's more interactive than the yes. Chinese professors because like the he was explaining how like Chinese students don't really respond in class and they're like shy to raise their hand. Mm -hmm. They don't talk to professors and stuff like that. So he was like, it's different to see that. American students are very interactive and mm -hmm. we want to ask questions and we want to talk to the professor mm -hmm. rather yeah, than cool. just standing there okay. and just sitting yeah he's cool. but one class it was I think that was the worst class the philosophy teacher the man oh so he taught Confucius for three hours straight <laughs> talking about Confucius for three hours and everybody was asleep and then he said mm -hmm. the same thing the next class. Yeah, the next class. So we had six to hours. Buddhism. I was like, can you get, can you go So, through? okay, well, he teaches philosophy and religion. So, and you know, Buddhism is kind of like both. So he did a whole three hour class on Buddhism, philosophy, and a whole three hour class on religion, which is kind of the same thing. You're just talking about it twice. But now you're like, oh, no, 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 it's, it's different because it's religion. <laughs> and it's, philo it's separate. It's and I'm, this is my third time to China. So, of course, like, I really like China. But hard being, Specifically, it's a lot different than all the other cities I've been to. It's not the best, but I still enjoy myself while I was here. At first, the weather wasn't too good, but now it's just great. People are still the same a little bit. Influence is different. Like, here in the northern part of China, it's a lot of Russians, a lot of Koreans. They're cool. My roommate's Korean. He's cool. So, I've learned a lot of new things out here. So, I'm definitely, definitely enjoy my time. I'm learning the language, I'm learning the people. Uh, I got more Russian friends and Chinese friends. I have a lot of memories and experiences here. Uh, but I think the biggest thing is just the language barrier. It's, I can't really do what I want to do because it's the language. And I think for me personally, in order for me to be fluent in the language, I would have to be here for maybe a year or two. You either gotta really, really take it seriously back home, or you gotta be here yeah. for like at least a good two years. Cause yeah. um, I'm not like, enough to, to get around, so I won't like get lost. Like I can get back to here. I, I know that much. As far as like holding an actual conversation, you know, talking yeah. about you know, you know academics and stuff, you really have to be here for an extended period of time. Cause like even. Back at Morehouse, I take Chinese, but it's all for a grade, you know? So, like, sometimes the grade gets in the way of actual learning. Mm -hmm. I just learned basically the basics that I thought that I needed to know. When I come out here, I actually live here for four months, it's like, damn, yeah. there's a lot more that I, that I need to know to be, like, fluent, like how people that have only been here a year, like, know more than me, you know? HBC culture, I can say, Everybody has a different style, but like everybody, for the most part, everybody's been taking pride in like their school. But I, I like it seeing different people from different schools. Yeah. I like how it wasn't just like, you know, BSU. I like how it was BSU. Yeah, I'm glad we're mixed with other schools. Mm -hmm. And then we get to like, I don't know, it's fun. So now we're like getting to know each other. So we like go to each other's homecomings and stuff like that. And they tell us about their school, like how it's similar or like how it's different. Everyone's different, but I feel like we have to learn how to deal with them because we're yeah. like the only black people we know. Mm -hmm. So we got to stick together. Yeah, we do have to stick. And it's kind of like, no matter how, like if we're really tired or like irritated, it's like we can't not like each other because we're like, we yeah, all we got, we all we got. Yeah. yeah, it's been fun. Like they are, we've been going out, the field trips, Tours are fun. They're very interesting. Yeah. So we've been having fun. I don't know. Having a good time. Yeah, we're having a good time. <laughs> Great time. I'm gonna give it the hey now. I mean, the international student dorm, like, yeah, they lock the doors at 12, but if you're outside those doors, they let you in. You take part of the activities on campus, and they treat you good. Like they look out for you. So me personally, I was a part of the international student team. All I did was play basketball, and I never had to go to class. I'm getting a boost on my exam scores. <laughs> I got a free trip to Beijing for nine days. The competition was only three days. We went everywhere in Beijing that's like a tourist location. I didn't have to pay for any food, and all I did was play basketball. And then even with the teachers, to go talk to go talk to a teacher, they're gonna do more for you than a teacher at Bowie. Bowie, you miss four classes, they try to fail you. They just want the international students to look good. Nah, I, I, I give it to Morehouse though. Hey, Da is cool. I really fuck with Morehouse. Like Morehouse is a, is a good school. I mean, of course, like most HBCUs, the administration, as far as like what they do and when they do it, is very slow. Like financial aid stuff like that, but. 
as far as the school, like the teachers, curriculum, students, the plate, like the city is in, like I, I like all that. I like a smaller school as opposed to a big school. So I mean, everything about Morehouse, I like more than Ada. Although I don't, I don't dislike Ada. I do like Ada a lot though. This past week we went to a pottery. A yeah, it was like an ancient clay pottery something something like that and it was just this city has 16 yeah 16 million 16 million in the area we end she said only had like six million we were in Foshan yeah yeah Foshan. Foshan and it's like even though that's still like a lot of people says so it made so much like it was so quiet it was oh my gosh it, it was, was so, so peaceful, peaceful. <laughs> we all have been to Dali and yeah the seafood was good the people, it was it was easier to understand their dialect than you know, Dongbei people. It just seemed a lot easier to understand what they were saying, even if they were speaking really fast. You know, it was a nice city. Yeah. And being international is a good thing. Being American. <laughs> being yeah. black. Yeah, like being American. American. Yeah, is, uh, That's why I like China. You get certain things. Um, you go out, you may get free drinks, maybe free food. People always want to come and meet you, shake your hand, hey, where you from? Being here in uh, Harbin, this was the first time I ever uh, been to Dalian, and it was like, it's one of the few cities in China that didn't feel like China at all. Like the scenery is a lot different, the air is different, it's everything just like it feels like I don't know. It don't it doesn't feel like America, but it doesn't feel like China either. Like yeah, uh, it was like the first time I ever seen like a beach while I was in China. Like I've been to Xi'an, I've been to Beijing, been to Shanghai, but never. Dalian was probably like one of the most non-Chinese cities, so I, I liked it a lot. I think the only thing that made me able to accept the differences of China is being black, period. Because in America, people, you would just be at the gas station with your friends. Somebody's gonna look at you like you're crazy. Here, everybody looks at you like you're crazy because they don't see people like you. So to, to understand that people don't understand black people as a whole, even in America, people don't understand the culture sometimes, so they look down upon it. I mean, people here do the same thing. They, people are, I had a, I have a Korean friend who told me, like, I thought all black people were violent until I met you guys. Like, And now, to me, you guys, it's like, I like black people, <laughs> in a sense. That's what she said. So it's like, I mean, the only thing that prepared me for this is being black, and the only reason I can understand it is because I'm black. The, the rest of it is like whatever, so I'm like <laughs> whatever. I mean, they take shits on the street. I look at them like they're crazy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm brown. They look at me like I'm crazy. The the sneak picture. The best defense for the sneak picture is to take a blatant picture of them. Like you gotta walk up to them, get in their face, make them real uncomfortable, and take their picture. <laughs> and next time they'll think twice before they try to sneak a picture. I think my my experience is a little bit different than Joey's because. The way I grew up, where I grew up, all that. Like me in Atlanta, inner city Atlanta, go to an all black elementary school, middle school, high school, then go to all black college. It's always been black people. So when I go to a gas station, I see black people. I don't see, like where I'm from, I told them like, I don't see white people at all. Never had a white friend in my life. <laughs> don't really know that too many white people at all. So it's like, I don't have that experience. So that's why I love to travel. Like, traveling is one of my, well, really my only passion because that's where I get my experience from. That's how I'm able to like, you know, grow as a person, although it seems as though I may be like stuck in like one, one dimension as being like around nothing but black people all my life. But really traveling gives me more opportunities to like experience the world more than people who say they go to a more than a black person from Atlanta who says they go to like a white school can ever have, you know? So when I come to China, although this is my third time, I've had a little bit more uh, a different experience, but I'm able to, each time I come, I'm able to uh, tackle the, I guess, different issues a different way just because of other travel experiences I've had. I'm, I'm, I think I'm more able to understand how they feel. I don't really try to react, but just try to understand how others, how others feel based off of like my skin color or whatever, something like that. Like, mm -hmm. What prepared me for China was, my favorite word here is opportunity. <laughs> um, um, no, nah, like I mean, uh, no, nah, really, <laughs> growing up, 
uh, you know, being from District Heights, Maryland, Walker Mill, um, it wasn't too many opportunities. So just growing up in life, um, you know, I would take advantage of uh, things like this and uh, me being in the workforce uh, before I came back to school, working with different people, um, that uh, made me uh, prepare for China and just being here. Um, and of course, what Joey said, being, being black and just being able to uh, adapt to any situation um, just made me prepare. So, yeah. Yeah, we already go through enough shit. So, China, yeah, China, China, so, yeah, China, China is, is nothing. It's just. Everything. I think it's your attitude and background that really. The size, yeah, how you're it's our attitude. Yeah, if you it, come in with mm -hmm. a positive attitude, then you'll have a positive experience. Mm -hmm. what's, what's but if our you little come quote? in like uh, China, then it's gonna be like you're gonna notice every little thing that's different. What's the thing in the bathroom? What does that say? Oh, don't let the shadows of, of yesterday, yesterday ruin the, the sunshine, sunshine of tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah, so that's what he said. So even if you have a bad day, it's really not a bad day because it's like you just have to take it fully in like there's okay highs and lows. yeah there's highs and lows but like even the lows aren't really lows but for the most part everybody we met like international they've been really nice like they always yeah. ask us like if we need anything they ask us like to go out or like they always pay for stuff yeah they always pay for stuff which is like really nice um i'm very happy yes because like when you see it on tv you assume the way it's supposed to be mm -hmm. but when you actually get here you actually see it for yourself and I don't know, it's just a good experience. Yeah, that's great. It just opens your eyes to like the endless opportunities and like possibilities that you could have. So it's one of those, what's that Jacob? Like it's beauty in the struggle. So it's like you're struggling, but then at the same time, it's, it's great. We landed in the airport and the agent's like, wait, we look around. Like, hold up. Hold up, we're the only black people. <laughs> Literally the only. Like, I don't know. After that, I didn't get uncomfortable with it. I was just like, damn, it's real. You really realized, <laughs> like, you were the only black people, or, or like, <laughs> I don't know. Black people, just, black people travel to. It's just like, I don't know. It wasn't that bad. It was just a long layover. And then, like, we didn't really, we still don't understand the money <laughs> in Russia, because, like, we converted 10, oh, okay. 10 US to theirs, and we got, like, 600, 600 and we were like, Whatever it was, I got like this hundred dollar euro bill. Yeah. I don't know what it was. But I thought that was a lot. So we yeah. saw this like Tom for a perfume. We were like, and it oh. said 98. So we were like, like, I just converted five dollars, got a hundred, and the perfume only 98. We was like, so that. Like, yeah, we were in there like buying, we getting all this perfume. Like, perfume was like, <laughs> like five dollars, like Tom for perfume, five dollars. Like, we get up to the register. <laughs> It was. She gave her the hundred. The balance. No, I gave like, her five hundred. You gave her five hundred. I gave her five hundred. The balance was like eight something. Eighty six thousand. Like I had a comma. Yeah. Like, what, what is this? She was like, like she was like, I was like, I gave you five hundred. She was like, no, no, no. And I think they're doing like thousand. So I think the the five was really fifty. The five hundred was really fifty or something like that. So we were just like really. And they had a comma. I'm like, hold up. We just like we just didn't understand. We just looked really dumb. My total. It was just, yeah, it was just long.